Hello everyone, welcome to the next session on hematology. So today we are going to discuss about what are platelets, how they are formed, that is thrombopoiesis. So in the previous classes, we have discussed about granulopoiesis and erythropoiesis. Today, I'm going to discuss about thrombopoiesis. Even though uh, like the proper stages or in-depth uh, details about uh, thrombopoiesis is not needed for an undergraduate level, but we should know how the thrombopoiesis differs from granulopoiesis and erythropoiesis in what are aspects, then about the structure of platelets, okay, what are the different granules, what are the stains and some newer terminologies, okay, these are all recent advances which has been not mentioned in any uh, previous what uh, edition books, fine. So as far as thrombopoiesis is concerned, you know, you know, like we have erythropoietin, we have something called as TPO or thrombopoietin. First, I am telling, we have something called as megakaryoblast. This megakaryoblast are nothing else but the precursor cells for platelets. Fine. Yes, where they are formed? Like in the bone marrow. Fine. So, what are the stages? Just to remember the stages. Okay. Number one, megakaryoblast, pro-megakaryocyte, granular megakaryocyte, mature megakaryocyte and platelets. Fine. Yes. Okay. So, remember... Uh, this megakaryocytes and platelet has some receptors called th for thrombopoietin. We call them a CMPL receptor. What is the name of the receptor called as CMPL receptors? This has been asked few years back in PJ exam. Okay, Central Institute exam. They have asked this question CMPL receptor. But remember, unlike the granulopoiesis and erythropoiesis, the platelets are not continuously produced from the bone marrow. Only whenever there is a demand, these platelets will be formed. Imagine when the platelets are continuously produced, what will happen? Yes, hypercoagulability. Am I right? Yes. So remember, these platelets will be formed only whenever there is a demand. When, 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 when there will be a demand in case of thrombocytopenia, where the platelet count is less, the thrombopoietin level in the blood will be increasing and this will cause increased megakaryocyte proliferation that leads to increase in platelet mass. I hope this uh, point is very clear for you. Okay. And remember, this megakaryocytes engulf this granulopoietic and erythroid precursors as well as lymphoid cells. And this phenomenon is what we call as empiripolysis. Already I have told you what is empiripolysis in the cell injury classes. Fine. Yes, I will show you the picture of an empiripolysis. Okay. Yes. See, this is nothing else but empiripolysis. You can see, you can see, I'm going to draw with a violet color. See, this is the megakaryocyte. Within the megakaryocyte, I am going to draw with a red color. You can see the neutrophils, reniform shaped nucleus of the neutrophil. Am I right? And you can, of course, see a small lymphocyte. That means one megakaryocyte, okay, is going to engulf the other precursor cell. And this phenomenon in which the cell in what engulf the other cell. And remember, the engulfed cell is intact. It is intact. This phenomenon is called. That word is important. Intact. Okay, intact. That is what we call it as empiripolysis. Empiripolysis, no, it is seen in case of megakaryocyte. Okay, a megakaryocyte, it is also seen in case of autoimmune hepatitis. AIH, I am writing autoimmune hepatitis. Fine? Yes. Okay, and another one more thing that is what we call it as Rossi Dorfman disease. Rossi Dorfman disease. These are the conditions where you can see empiripolysis. I hope this point is very clear for you. Okay, once this is done, now let us see what are the stages. Number one, I told you we have megakaryoblast. Okay, we have megakaryoblast. And remember the major point, okay, uh, that differentiates um, what to say the cells the, or the pr uh, process from other uh, synthesis that is leukopoiesis and uh, erythropoiesis is that in other stages you can see that the RBC, am I right? RBC. Uh, or in case of granulopoiesis, you can see that the size of the cell, the size of the cell is having a what to say an oriented change for example in erythropoiesis initially the uh, blaster cells that is the erythroblast cells are large and finally the mature rbc is small or i can say almost all cells are like somewhat uh, uh, only a small variation in size in granulopoiesis the myeloid precursors are very huge cells while but uh, what to say uh, but the final neutrophils or eosinophils form now they are a moderate in size whereas in case of platelets it is not just the we can't compare the size of the megakaryoblast consider the megakaryoblast size is like this, the platelets are like this dot dot structures fine because these platelets are nothing else but the extruded cytoplasm of the megakaryocyte 
okay that is the reason platelets do not have nucleus in rbc the reticulocyte loses nuclear reticulo it is a stage of reticulocyte where there is a nucleus is absent okay before that there is a late erythroblast or what we call it as a late normoblast the nucleus is completely shut down whereas in case of megakaryoblast actually what are these platelets platelets are nothing else but the shredded cytoplasm of the megakaryocyte i hope this is very important okay i hope you are clear with this okay then what are the markers i have told you in all videos that each uh, what to say set of a lineage has some characteristic IHC marker. Here we have, remember, I am writing it here, CD41, CD61 and CD42B. These are the three important immunohistochemistry marker for megakaryocyte series. Okay, yes. From that we are having pro-megakaryocyte, then intermediate forms, mature megakaryocytes. Okay, yes. And finally, we are getting what we call it as the uh, platelets. Okay, finally we are getting what we call it as the platelets. Okay. Yes. So actually, what are these platelets? So I hope this is clear. There is no need that you should know uh, what um, much more about like as we have studied in erythropoiesis and leukopoiesis. Each stage there is uh, there is no need that you should know in detail. Okay, uh, it's not needed for an UG level. But just remember one point. This you can see. You know what is this? Like an orange reddish stain. Yes. Yes. The same stain we see in case of monocyte. Can you say what is the name of the stain? Yes. Very very important. It is non-specific esterase. Megakaryocytes also stain positive for non-specific esterase. Remember CD61, CD41 and CD42B. These are some of the important what uh, IHC markers for megakaryocytes. Okay. Yes. See, you can see, you know, the megakaryocytes, you can see they are large. Yes, of course, I can see in the bone marrow, the largest cell is nothing else but the megakaryocyte. See, you can see the, uh, this is, this. see, this huge cell, no, this is the megakaryocyte in the bone marrow aspirate. Fine. Yes. So I told you the platelets are nothing else but the shed of cytoplasm from the megakaryocyte. That is the reason why platelets do not have nucleus. That is the reason why platelets do not have nucleus. Okay. Then of course I told you we have something what we call as this megakaryopoiesis. In this megakaryopoiesis, like I told you, in this erythro and this uh, granulopoiesis, there will be nuclear budding. There will be nuclear bridging. All those points. There will be vacuolization. There will be hyperlobated nucleus, non-granular cytoplasms. Okay. All those points mm, you can get here also. Okay. Fine. That is, see, all this dyserythropoiesis, this leukopoiesis, this granulopoiesis, uh, this megakaryopoiesis, all these are characteristic feature of MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome that we will discuss in the upcoming class. Remember CD41, CD61 and CD42B. Okay, just uh, what to say, uh, inculcate these markers into your mind. Okay, because it is these markers which helps you to have a very good idea when we read the leukemias and the lymphomas and all the myeloproliferative neoplasm. These markers, if you have a prior knowledge about these markers, if you are aware about these markers, it will be really easy or else you have to buy heart at that time also fine yes so with this i told you know this mega carry poise is seen in case of uh, myelodysplastic syndrome okay fine then coming into the next important point yes this is the point where i have to uh, stress much on that is the platelets okay yes Coming into what are platelets, they are the fragments of cytoplasm of the megakaryocyte. Normal count is 1.5 to 4 lakhs per cubic millimeter. Lifespan is important, 4 to 10 days. Fine. The Romanovsky group of staining, when we use that stain, the platelets appear as pale blue colored structure with the purple granules. You can see here, you can see here, these are the pale purple okay uh, colored uh, uh, yes, structures with the purple granules okay fine and remember in a normal person there will be one platelet for every 10 to 25 red cells i told you they have immunohistochemistry what are the stains cd61 and cd41 remember cd42b it is expressed only in megakaryocytes it is expressed only in megakaryocytes that is the platelets which are the mature forms they don't express i am writing cross Okay, they are absent in platelets, they are present only in megakaryocyte, whereas CD61 and 41, it is expressed in both. Fine, yes, that is very important. So, they are again disc shaped cells, they do not have any nucleus, Golgi apparatus, or endoplasmic reticulum. Fine, yes. And um, next is what we call it as immature uh, platelet fraction okay like we have studied immature reticulocyte fraction we have something called as immature platelet fraction so this immature platelet fraction is decreased in case of aplastic anemia okay and it is increased in case of immune thrombocytopenic purpura and post hemorrhage okay like i told you how the immune reticulo sorry immature reticulocyte fraction it, uh, it is an indicator of the bone marrow activity similarly immature platelet fraction it also it is an early indicator of platelet regeneration and precedes the platelet count rise by some three to four days okay 
see this is an uh, peripheral blood smear which shows scattered platelets why the platelets are scattered they may ask this in your practical the platelets if they are scattered in the peripheral smear it is because of the edta ethylene diamine tetracetate okay yes and you can see the platelets are clumped because it is a finger uh, prick okay in finger prick you know the platelets will be clumped and the this is an ihc ihc shows positive for cd61 and cd41 not cd42b they will ask in mcq which of the following ihc markers are not expressed in platelets answer is cd42b coming into electron microscopic appearance of the platelets the platelet has an outer okay the platelet has something what we call it as an outer glycocalyx inner to that we have something called as the peripheral sorry plasma membrane so this glycocalyx is the outermost coat okay it appears like a flat disc platelets appear like a flat disc and glycocalyx is the outermost coat fine and uh, it has a negative charge due to the sialic acids which is present in this it is responsible it is this negative charge of the glycocalyx which helps the platelets to adhere to the damaged endothelium then we have the plasma membrane which is a trilamellar membrane like in other cases like glycoproteins glycolipids uh, and uh, cholesterol is also present there and a very very important point a very very important point that you have to remember is that platelet factor 3 is present in this membrane it plays a very important role in blood coagulation which of the following factor or which of the following what yes a factor present in the plasma membrane of the platelet helps in uh, replace a very important role in blood coagulation it's a straight line one liner question for you the answer is platelet factor 3 remember it is not produced present within any granules very very important because later later i will be telling platelet factor 4 platelet factor 4 is the compo it's the component of or it belongs to the granules we have two types of granules alpha granules and dense granules platelet factor 4 belongs to these granules whereas platelet factor 3 it is not a component of granules it is present in the plasma membrane okay we have something called as the cytoskeleton of the platelets that is responsible for maintaining the morphology of the platelets okay it has a dense tubular system and a surface connected canalicular system just remember Remember these two points. Then we have two set of granules. One is what we call it as alpha granules, and another one is called as dense bodies. The question here is: you should know what are the contents of these alpha granules and dense bodies. One MCQ is must. So alpha granules contain beta thromboglobulin, platelet factor 4, von Willebrand's factor, fibrinogen, thrombospondin, glycoprotein 2B3A, and PCAM1. Okay, and remember there is a condition called as gray platelet syndrome. What is that called as gray? platelet syndrome gray platelet syndrome in which the alpha granules will be decreased in this syndrome alpha granules will be decreased it's a congenital anomaly it's a congenital anomaly alpha granules are decreased in case of gray platelet syndrome so beta thromboglobulin platelet factor 4 see i told you no? platelet factor 4 3 platelet factor 3 is present in the plasma membrane von willebrand factor fibrinogen thrombospondin glycoprotein 2b3 and pkm1 all these are present in the alpha granules dense bodies dense bodies have atp adp calcium magnesium serotonin gtp gdp so it is very easy to remember this so except this everything you know in the option you can mark it as it is a part of alpha granules okay yes and this dense bodies you no know, it is characteristically in electron microscopy it can see as a what we call it as bull's eye appearance this has been asked in multiple times in the pg entrance exam okay bull's eye appearance in the platelets in electron microscopy is because of okay it is because of the dense bodies not the alpha granules okay then of course we have micro peroxisomes are present which has the enzyme called as acid hydrolases beta hexosaminidases and their function is to lyse the thrombus which is formed then we have some receptors called glycoprotein 2b3a the main function of glycoprotein 2b3a is adhesion or aggregation of platelets glycoprotein 1p9 it is responsible for the interaction of platelets with the von willebrand factor glycoprotein 2b3a is defective in a condition called as glanzmann thrombosthenia and glycoprotein 1p9 is defective in a condition called bernard solier syndrome no worries we will discuss all these in detail in platelets chapter and we have something called as throm thrombospondin i told you thrombospondin is the part of alpha granules or dense granules very good it is alpha granules okay it is responsible for stabilization of the platelet aggregate then fibronectin it helps the platelets to bind to various that is collagen endothelium and all and platelet factor 4 it neutralizes the anticoagulant activity by hepa uh, of heparin by binding to it yes here comes the question in what we call it as hit heparin induced thrombocytopenia auto antibodies are produced against which of the following component option a platelet factor 4 option b thrombospondin option c fibrinogen option d von willebrand factor answer is platelet factor 4 in the chapter hemodynamics i have very beautifully explained this heparin induced thrombocytopenia it is one of the recent update which has been added in 10th edition of robbins okay there is a very beautiful picture about the mechanism of uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia in that it is very beautifully mentioned that it is the auto antibodies against the platelet factor 4 which is responsible for hit okay because it neutralizes the anticoagulant activity of heparin by binding to it Fine. Then I told you Bernard Solier and von Willebrand's disease. In von Willebrand's disease, no, we have deficiency of von Willebrand factor. Then I told you platelet factor 3. Yes, this question has been asked in Jipmer. 
this question has been asked in jipmer few years back that is what is the function of platelet factor 3 okay this is uh, mainly required for interaction of factor 10a and 5a yes that was the question they have asked few years back in jipmer which of the following is responsible for interaction of factor 10 and factor 5 answer you know factor 10 factor 5 all this comes into the or coagulation cascade we have intrinsic and extrinsic pathway that and all again we will revise in uh, chapter platelets then platelet factor 3 is responsible for interaction between these two okay then we have something called as platelet associated coagulation factor which are platelet factor 1 5 then 13 9, uh, 11 protein s and high molecular weight kininogen they may ask this question what are the platelet associated coagulation factors see these things are not mentioned in any books no no books mention all these things in detail so remember the platelet associated coagulation factor clotting factor number 1 then 5 then 13 then 11 protein s then von willebrand factor and high molecular weight kininogen so all the underlying points are extremely important so this is the structure they may ask you in pathology to draw and label the structure of platelets so you can see the peripheral microtubules uh, then dense body which is the bullseye appearance then the this is what we call it is the alpha granules you can see two types of tubular system now one is what we call it is a dense tubular system and this is what we call it as a canalicular system okay yes which is surface that is superficial located whereas density is deeply located then we can have the mitochondria and of course we have something what we call it as the micro peroxisomes which has the enzymes called beta hexaminidase okay and uh, glycerol phosphatase that helps in lysis of thrombus so with this we have finished about um thrombopoiesis okay you should know you should have a very good idea about thrombopoiesis just remember the cmpl receptor then structure of platelets okay then what are the ihc markers hmm? then what is empiripolysis and name three conditions in which empiripolysis is present number one megakaryocyte synthesis okay then number two autoimmune hepatitis and number three rosidophan disease so i hope this session has been useful for all you thank you